Okay. Um, almost at the end. I'm actually kind of proud of myself that I've made it this far. Chapter 15. After a couple of... Sorry. Chapter 16. No, is that the right one? Yeah, it is. Chapter 16. I leave the mansion and stroll down the hill. Is that definitely the right chapter? Hold on a second. No, yeah, no, I've not read that. Right. Ch chapter 16. I leave the mansion and stroll down the hill, trying not to look into the clear pink sky. It reminds me too much of Stacy. After passing a few houses, I realise I'm being followed by Fig. I stop and sneer back at her as she approaches, clenching my fists as if to punch her in the face if she gets too close. What? I yell. It's bright out here, she says, completely unfazed by my anger. She wiggles her nostrils at the air as if trying to smell the pink of the sky. <laughs> Honestly. Let's get out of the bright, she says. <clears throat> Let's get out of the bright, she says, wandering into an abandoned lime green house on her left. Oh. No, oh, come on. Come on, you've only got like fucking 20 pages left to read. <sighs> I watch her disappear into the house without looking back. I wait in the street for a while, staring at my rubbery red feet. Every fucking sentence! Every single sentence! Like, did you, did you just save your fucking... The worst possible shit that you could think up just for the end of the book? What the fuck? Okay. I think I might have lost patience for this. She doesn't come back out to see what's keeping me. She's so odd. I decide to leave and continue down the road, but something's preventing me from going. Something drives me in to go into the house with Fig. Maybe I just don't want to go into the bottom of the hill. There are skeletons down there, and the neighbourhood of black deformities. That's a, that's a sentence. There are skeletons down there, and the neighbourhood of black deformities. Not to mention, there is an enormous lake of some guy's rancid cum. <laughs> Fuck. Am I gonna fall at the fucking, like, last hurdle here? I just... I lost my fucking page. There we go. All right. Maybe I have nothing better to do. Yeah, that, yeah, you and me both. You, you and me fucking both. Maybe I just... Don't want to be alone. I find her upstairs, squatting in the hallway. <laughs> her shiny rump sticking in the air as she pulls on carpet fragments. <sighs> I find her upstairs, squatting in the hallway. Her shiny rump sticking in the air as she pulls on carpet fragments. They like the attention, she says. I realise... Sorry, one second. No, oh, yeah, that's the next page. They like the attention, she says. I realise I am checking out her ass when I see my... 
This is a child. You've you've established that this is a right. Am I am I fucking remembering it wrong? I thought like it was a fucking. I realize. <sighs> I realize I'm checking out her ass when I see my reflection in one of her white butt cheeks. <laughs> and quickly. And, uh, and, qui and quickly turn away before she catches me. I pass her and enter one of the bedrooms. It is filled with three beds, three dressers, and a large window with chainmail curtains. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Whatever. A kid's room. A kid's room! <laughs> it's got chain mail curtains! We should play now, Fig says behind me. I shrug. Fig attempts to kid. Oh, fuck, here we go. Fig attempts to kiss me. I turn my head away and she begins sucking on my neck with latex lips. I push her away. What are you doing? She pulls me by the hand toward one of the kiddie beds. Oh fuck! God damn it! No! No! Right, what- We're playing, she says. Her wormy fingers curl around- Her wormy fingers curl around my penis. Playing? This is what she meant by playing? She slips her tongue. Is this... No, is this... It, hold on a minute, I need to go back. Um... Nope. Sorry, uh, give me a second. I'm looking for the bit where uh, Fig is introduced. Fig doesn't live alone in this world, is it? Uh... Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, in another corner facing the statue is the girl I saw- Girl! Not woman, girl! I saw in the woods, also curled on the floor. Uh, I don't speak, just to examine her, she sobs, her skin is yada yada. The girl, 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 you're using the girl, the word girl, multiple fucking times. Uh, fallback, uh, she seems more like a computer-generated cartoon character. Yeah, she's Jar Jar Binks. Um. Alright, fine, maybe I just pictured her as, well, like, like you've used the word fucking girl. Fine, she's woman. Now, now I can continue. Her wormy fingers curl around my penis. Playing? This is what she meant by playing? She slips her tongue into my tiny mouth as she fondles my squishy member into erection. I shove her away. No! She looks confused at me. But we're supposed to play. I don't want to play with you. Good man. Good man. Um, you're not for her anymore, she says, rubbing my arms. You're for me. She knows I'm thinking about Stacy. I clench my fists, my face turning red in Fig's cartoon eyes. I want to hurt someone. I want someone to feel my pain, physically. I want, I want to make somebody pay for all that's happened to me. As my rage builds, Fig watches me, masturbating at me. Masturbating at me? What? A vein in my forehead twitches as she wipes her greasy fingers across my, across my lips and nostrils, just like Stacy used to do. Stacy al always liked to see my reaction to the taste of her, to the smell of her, even though she knew it pissed me off. I don't know if I've got the stomach for this. How many fucking pages are left? Like... Ten. But Fig tastes different than Stacy. She is the flavour of roses. Flower sweat. Her scent fills my lungs and gives my breath a fluffy texture. 
Something in my brain snaps and I find myself lunging at Fig. I grab her by the elbows and squeeze her as hard as I can, trying to crush pain into her snake-like arms. Then I throw her to the ground as hard as I can, pin her down and choke her the way Stacy used to choke me. I stop when I see her face. She's looking at me, confused. Not hurt or scared, just not sure what I'm trying to do. I take my hands away from her throat and look away from her, shamefaced. That's not how you do it, she creaky says beneath me. I feel her grabbing at my erection and pointing it to her crawl. She rubs it against her slippery opening, her breath cold on my neck. Then she grabs my butt with both hands and pulls me into her. Inside, it's like hot jelly or maybe rubber cement. She bites onto me with a crooked smile, gripping my hips and pulsing against me. We kiss each other with our tiny mouths, pressing it. Why are their mouths so... Oh, it's the skeleton. Yeah. Uh, pressing against each other's smooth plastic skin. My rubbery penis pumps into her latex vagina, <laughs> creating a loud squeaky sound that echo echoes through the musty room. She doesn't have any nipples, but I lick her breasts as if they were there. It doesn't seem to do anything for her, though. What am I reading? Our sex feels far from human, you fucking think. More like snail sex. Uh, or jellyfish sex. Or Japanese anime sex. Our boneless bodies <laughs> twisting into inhuman positions. It's incredibly strange, but it might just be the best sex I've ever had. The orgasm ripples through my entire body, like ocean waves under my skin. My testicles crack open and release two raw eggs. What?! My testicles crack open and release two raw eggs that goo up and out of my shaft into fig. She closes her eyes, then leans back as the yolks sink deep inside of her. As the yolks pop, she lets out a sigh and curls her head deep into my shoulder, tears dripping down her cheek, pooling on my neck. I wake up after a short snooze, fig cinnamon hair in my face, her drool on my chest. We're hardly able to both fit on the kid's bed. Not kid's bed. Why include that as a detail in your fucking story? Why? Like, just have it be on the fucking ground. We're hardly able to both fit on the kid's bed, but we're so twisted around each other that neither of us are in danger of falling off. I unpretzel myself. <laughs> okay, all right. Do you know what? Carlton Malik the third, uh. <laughs> You're you're a god among among men. Um, I I unpretzel myself and slip out of the room. Uh, through the chainmail curtains on the balcony. <laughs> oh my god, I'm fucking crying. Uh, the warmth of the bright pink sky glazes my face. This place isn't a ghost world, just a beaten down lonely world. It must have been around for centuries, getting passed from host to host, mother to daughter, generation after generation. I can't even begin to imagine how this place was even created. I can't fucking see properly. Tears in my eyes. Right. I can't even begin to imagine how this place was even created. Perhaps it was created by some kind of cosmic accident. Perhaps it was bioengineered by some kind of Asian Frankenstein.
Perhaps it was <laughs> Okay, stop. 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 Come on. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start laughing again. Um right. Uh, but <laughs> perhaps it was bioengineered. No, I can't read that line again. I'm just gonna fucking start laughing. Uh, I'll, I'll skip the next one. Or perhaps it's some sort of evolutionary mutation. Perhaps a long time ago in Asia, where Stacy was born, there was a village that had too many people but not enough food. <laughs> where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, perhaps this situation went on for so long that evolution had to step in and do something about it. Perhaps a few mutant females were born, each containing fertile worlds inside of them. Worlds that many of the villagers could move into. Worlds where its occupants wouldn't need food or water. World- Is this- What the fuck? Is this- What? Worlds where its occupants wouldn't need food or water. Worlds that could sustain several villages. All that would be needed is to feed and protect the female hosts of the worlds. I look out to the blackened houses down the road. Fig called it the cancer. Perhaps Stacy's mother had a disease that spread through her body, destroying her insides as well as the world within her. Perhaps she passed the world on to Stacy and gave birth to her before the cancer could destroy the entire world. Perhaps her mother died of the disease before she had the chance to tell Stacy about the secret place hidden in her belly. When she was adopted by her American parents and brought to California, Stacy was forever cut off from the truth. That is, if anyone still knows the truth. I'm pretty sure that the world was created so long ago that nobody really knows the truth anymore, even the inhabitants of this world. After so many generations, the truth has probably been twisted, turned into myth. These people have been detached from the outside world for so long that they probably doubt it even exists. They probably know as much about it as we know of heaven. It's actually a good line. Oh, the fu- oh, no, it's, it's not the end of the chapter. I'm still going. Okay. I'm going to miss them, Fig says, stepping onto the balcony behind me. She's looking at the sky. I think she's talking about the clouds. She had names for all of them. She talks about them as if they were real people. They were my friends, she says, a tear on her cheek. I wrap my arms around her. I don't know why. It's ridiculous that she's crying over the loss of some clouds. But in a way, I guess it's kind of cute. You're here. Nope, sorry. You're here, though, she says. You're better. I wipe her cheek with my thumb. It makes a sound like a windshield wiper. <laughs> you, you, you love me back, she says. I freeze at the word love and step away from her. I never said I love you. We hardly know each other. But you changed for me, she says petting my slimy horns, touching my skin. You're mine. I didn't want to change, I say. It just happened. It happened because you belong to me. Okay. Okay. Alright. That's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 